Thunder Strike and Death Touch? You've got to be kidding me. Only shooting stars break the mold. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Brawl Stars. I'm Amy the Amazonian, and today I am playing a brand new commander, Glissa Sunslayer. Glissa Sunslayer is special because she has First Strike and Death Touch, making her mostly unblockable. You don't want to block her. She, she will kill your blocking creatures. Glissa Sunslayer also has abilities on combat damage dealt to players, which makes her very nice as a Voltron commander. And if you've never seen a Voltron commander before, uh, what it means is that we are putting lots of things all onto one creature to try and make it so she can win the game. So Glissa is a, well, she's kind of a saga synergizer too. So we may as well get in some auras and sagas and go for a sub theme of enchantress and you're wondering amy how does this work with sagas it says she destroys enchantment yes but she also removes counters from permanent now what does that mean that means we could i don't know have the frexian scriptures come out turn her into an artifact destroy all non artifact creatures and then have her remove those like chapters and then go back to chapter one next turn do it all over again a uh, glist is very cool also because that removing counters from a permanent works on your opponents. Planeswalkers, that's right, this is a mini questing beast effect. Also, you can choose to draw cards, destroy enchantments, and just have a good time because you're hitting people in the face with Glissa. Um, We have a bunch of really good artifacts and enchantments in this deck to go with Glissa. And of course, because we're in Golgari colors, that's green and black, we get to run all the best non-land permanent removal. I'm talking about Finding the Old Gods, Mortality Spear, Braska, Death Sprout, and of course, Casualties of War. Because if you're destroying one thing, you may as well destroy five things. It's better. It's more fun. So we're going to take Glissa into the queue, and I'm going to show you a little bit of Saga Rewinding, Big Creature Brewing, Slam Jamming, Fun Times. Squirrelmonger's playing Illus Ilhor's Sadistic Pilgrim. Um, so it's a good commander. Because he it gains life and drains life. Also, 2-2 two -two with Death Touch for two. Works really, really well with cards that like reanimate your creatures or get bigger when you gain life or make your opponent lose life when your creatures die, just like the commander. Ooh, and it looks like they might have a pretty big life gain theme here because I see that authority of the consoles and I'm going to go ahead and ramp at it. So we have our Safer Sanctuary down. I'm really happy to have this in my opening hand a few times here. We got down a Shadow Spear. And now it's time for Glissa. Do I think they're going to kill Glissa if I play her here? I'm too scared. I'm not playing Glissa. You're in the colors of good removal. I'm also in the colors of good removal. We're not the same. Hello, Heliod. Yeah, absolutely going for a life gain theme here. Um, I'm tempted to actually beside you this. It's going to give them more mana, but it is going to make it so my things come in untapped. And also, they will not be getting life to make things bigger on my turn. Lights stop flickering in my apartment challenge! Oh my gosh, I just realized I could have destroyed Heliod. Because I can make things lose indestructible. Next time, Amy, next time. All right, so Gliss is out and she's chilling. She's vibing and she has first strike and death touch, which means even though you have death touch, you don't have the other half, the first striking half. So you probably don't want to attack in. You probably don't want to attack in. Okay. First strike and death touch. Probably don't want to attack in. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm. It doesn't. First strike. First strike and death touch. Okay. I protect. Looking good, Glissa. Looking real good. Um, you know what? I'm going to make all of my opponents' permanents lose hexproof and indestructible. Then I'm going to attack with Glissa. And remember how I said this is an enchantment. Now it doesn't have indestructible. He's dead. 
guess I also could have equipped the Shadow Spear. But I was busy thinking about killing a god. I did it. I killed a god! Oh, worm? A massacre worm. Now, you might be big and scary and give my creatures minus two, minus two until end of turn, but can you deal with first strike, death touch, and soon to be added? Oh, I guess I just threw that away. I don't have that many creatures in my deck. Trample. Bonus, if it dies, it comes back. I attack. Do you block? They do not block. I will draw a card. Mm, this one. Ah, another protective spell. Big fan of that. Big, 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 big fan of that. Outside of life's bounty, that does give protection, which would stop all the, like, first strikey and death touchiness of Glissa. Hmm. I still feel like it's worth attacking. I'm going to. I'll, I will be killing, at the very least, the Elsaid. And I could also use either the Heroic Intervention or the Ghost Form. Four damage will go through. Glissa will not die. And we can draw another card. Gimme. Ooh, a tearing ass. Um, I'll just go ahead and uh, wait for next turn for this bad boy. Dramatic star. That's just a little bit of fixing. This is actually very good if they have cards like Lurus in their deck, which they almost certainly do. Lurus, uh, Sarah Paragon, really, really strong cards with Chromatic Star. Also really good with Sacrificeable Creatures that you can keep bringing back. Ooh, they even sacrificed their commander there. Okay. And it looks like that's going to be game. Our Gliss is on the battlefield, has a protective spell on it, is able to remove Indestructible, and we have, well, any target removal in our hand. It's looking pretty good. Good game, Squirrelmonger. It's Nalia! Hello, Nalia! Uh, Nalia is a human rogue who likes to party. Um, she has party payoff and also lets you cast party members from your deck. <laughs> Pretty cool. Okay, what do we got here? Uh, we have protect, protect, attack, attack. Let's keep. Usher of the Fallen. Meet. Shaper's Sanctuary. If they target my creatures with spells or abilities, I draw a card. This doesn't stop them from removing my stuff, but it does make it harder. It makes it a bit, you know, better for me if they have removal. Also, it's payoff for this enchantment sub-theme we happen to have for this deck. All right, two mana doesn't give me anything this turn, so we're just going to wait. And it looks like they're using some, uh, some warriors, yep. Shapeshifters to fit the party bill. And then, of course, Nalia will be a rogue. That is three different party members, but they didn't have mana that came in untapped, which is extremely normal. <laughs> it really is. Um, I could go for Glissa here. I could go for Dryad. Do I think they have removal? Probably. So I'm going to wait until I can actually protect Glissa, and I'm just going to get down the Dryad of the Elysian Grove. Hello there, handsome. Have you seen the alternate art of this card by Fiona Staples? If not, don't look it up while you're at work. It's sultry, to be kind. So Dryad's gonna sit out here being an enchantment, being a 2-4, and blocking until they can get out some bigger creatures, like Nalia. Nalia, by the way, will give things a death touch and plus one, plus one counters. Um, it won't make them indestructible, though, so we could still trade since we've already gotten what we need out of this. Ooh! Various Retribution. I guess that is a warrior. This is a warrior token. Um, it's also a warrior that's able to destroy the Dryad or Glissa. Unless we destroy the Angel first. We're going to play Vraska Golgari Queen, a great commander. And also a great card in pretty much anything Golgari. I've, I've played a couple of Vraska Sacrifice decks. They're really nice. And I will pass back to them. 
This is, by the way, an angel. But I have nothing with zero power on the board. Hmm. Zero power. Cool planeswalker, though. Um, Brathka's plus two ability sacrifices, gains me life, draws a card. Minus three, destroys non-land permanents that cost three or less, like that token. And if you manage to get her to an ult, you not quite win the game, but you get pretty dang close. And, <gasps> ooh, they target my creature with a Journey to Oblivion. I will draw a card. It was a land, and we're going to protect our Dryad here because this makes it so if they want to attack Raska and kill her, they'll have to sacrifice one of these creatures in the process. How important is it to you to destroy this Raska this turn? And the answer was not important enough. Um, this really doesn't do anything. That's an angel until end of turn, but like... Oh no! An angel! Neat! You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna destroy one of our party members. I'm gonna kill the Usher of the Fallen, which gives me a treasure token. And I can use that treasure token either for the Swift Foot Boots here or to just sacrifice here. This is a May ability. You don't have to sacrifice, but I will. To draw a card, gain a life. It is another land, and we sit back here and we block. Hmm, Universal Automaton, a 1 1 angel, and warrior, and rogue, and cleric, and wizard. I think wizards is probably the hardest thing to pull off in black and white. Fracture! Ah, they destroyed one of my planeswalkers. That's a very, very useful spell. There's a lot of really good uncommon removal in both Orzov, our opponent's colors, and Golgari, which are ours. I'll play an extra little land here. Play Glissa. Boots? Put the boots on Glissa? Oh my gosh, this is working? Attacking in with Glissa. Dealing three damage with Glissa. Drawing a card with Glissa. Drawing a card with Glissa. Having a protection spell with Glissa. Yeah! Since we've played lots of extra lands, we have a lot of extra ramp here, and I don't feel bad sacrificing one of these lands to Raska. Um, I could play the Druid class here. I'm not going to. If they have a board wipe, which this might be a board wipe, I want to be ready with Gaia's gift to make this indestructible and a bunch of other stuff. Reach, trample, hex roof, and indestructible until end of turn. And also bonus plus one plus one counter. Back to my turn. We're gonna play Druid class. More good enchantments. This is not a saga, but it does level up. We're gonna level it up, level two. Before I bring it to level three, I'm actually going to, again, sacrifice one of my lands. Try to draw another land because I would love to be able to attack with uh, whatever I draw. Okay, didn't get one, that's fine. I'm still going to level this up. This would be bad if they happen to have a board wipe, but kind of neutral otherwise. Druid class, we're going to animate our snow-covered forest here. We'll go to combat. And Sigurd, god favorite, is able to exile an attacking creature. We draw a card, though, because that is an ability that's targeting my creature. And this has protection from god creatures, which, I mean... That's fine. Gliss is not a god. She'd probably like it if you called her a god, but she's not a god. She's a Phyrexian zombie elf. She's a zelf. Also, they would have been able to exile Glissa there if it weren't for the hex proof from the Swiftfoot boots. They're swinging at Vraska there, bringing her back down to three loyalty. Hello there, Shepherd of Heroes. This is an angel cleric that gains them two life for each party member, so gain them six. Nice! Six life! That's pretty good. Uh, I'm feeling a little bit of removal. I'm going to use up Vraska, take out this, so I can play lots and lots of lands. I can already play one extra from this. And remove one of their blockers using Garuk. Hello, Garuk. Draw a card. We deal 13. 13 is pretty good. And they're down to 10 life. 
Truly a battle of mid rangey This is a very good planeswalker. Golgari planeswalkers tend to be good. Surprises nobody, right? right? They still have this foretold card. If it was Doomscar, I think they would have used it. So it might be single target removal in black, like just kill target creature. What could it be? We, ha we have really good protective spells, though. Oh, Jadar. They played a wizard. Um, This is a human wizard off the top of their uh, library. Nice job. Okay. Um. Oh, I do want land. All right. The reason I want land here is because of Trample from Gaia's Gif. Uh, we're going to into the north, grab the snow land. Does not matter which. Cool. We gain life. Um, sure, I'll make some dogs. We're going to attack in with everybody here. See how they block. Ooh, I should have played the ranger class. Leveled that up once, too. I didn't realize I had the mana for it, but I do. And this is what I was hoping for. A one toughness blocker in front of the snow-covered forest. There's a plus one, plus one counter on it. Yeah, okay, Glissa. Glissa's like, look, I'm the commander. Yeah, we all know, Glissa, you're the commander. And we're... Dealing lethal damage with dirt. Dirt put the hurt on him. Rose is playing Rigo, a streetwise mentor. This is a lower to the ground tempo slash aggro commander. It could be pretty cool. Rigo streetwise mentor is oftentimes a deck that is full of one and two drops, things that have one power or less, so you can keep attacking with them and drawing more of them. Lots of unblockable creatures and super evasive things. So hopefully we're going to be able to keep pace with them and not get our stuff countered. Because when you're drawing that efficiently, sometimes counter spells are the way to go. All right, so I see blue, I see white, but it is tapped. And I also see that I don't actually have anything I'm doing this turn. I have Shaper Sanctuary. It's kind of neat. It makes it so if my creatures get targeted by a spell or ability, I draw a card. I like that. <gasps> Ooh, shocking. And an Arcane Signet into Terramander. A very evasive little critter, critter right there. Um, do I want to go for Glissa? Or the Dryad and get a little ramp? I'm going to play Glissa here. So Glissa is on the battlefield. Um, ready to attack. First strike, death touch. Lots of abilities to choose from. And hopefully she won't be removed. All right, Rigo's out. Meaning that the Terramander, when it attacks in, is going to draw cards. Oh, but not one. Two. One on declaring an attack and one on combat damage. Nice. Well, good news is I can destroy enchantments. And I'm not actually sure if our opponent will want to block when they see that we've got trample. Thank you, Audacity, for that bit of trample right there. Even if they block, this won't die because of the shield counter, but we'll still get to destroy the curiosity. And I will go ahead and do that. Out of the way. By the way, I can also remove shield counters. I think that's cool. Dryad of the Elysian Grove coming out and let me play an extra land for the turn so I can hold up one of our many protective spells because if we're putting everything in one basket, like Glissa, we need to protect that beautiful egg-filled basket. Uh, and cards like Tyvar Stand do a really good job. This is a new kind of like indestructible hexproof card. We've gotten a few of these in the last few sets and I really like this one because it doubles as a finisher. Instant speed, you can give it lots of power. It's really nice. Glisten now has so much text. Oh, so much text. Ooh, suspicious stowaway. This is an unblockable werewolf. And Mausoleum Wanderer is... I think it's a counter spell? Yeah, it's a counter spell. You can sacrifice it to uh, target, counter target instant or sorcery spell. Neato! Uh, Glissa, you ready? Because you ready to rock? Hey, we're going in? Opponent. Okay, okay, okay. We're good. Uh, I'm going to swing in with both Glissa and the Dryad, since I don't think they really want a quadruple block. Maybe they do. Ah, I draw a card. Let's draw that card. Hmm, a mirror shield. And we're just going to do uh, X equals 1 here, since it will give me plenty of other stuff to do. Giving hexproof onto my Glissa! And also, hit and face. Uh, I will draw a card, since that's the only counter. I don't really need that. 
and I'm going to throw down the Mirror Shield. Hello, Mirror Shield. Why is this in the deck? It's because we are a Voltron deck, and this gives Hexproof. There are only so many things in Arena that give Hexproof. They really tried to move away from Hexproof, and this does a good job. This does a good job. Okay, they draw a card, then they draw a card and discard a card. And then we eat Ulamog cereal. Mmm, it's devoid of flavor! I actually bought um, a joke cereal from the supermarket this week. Marcus Smart from the uh, Celtics basketball team made his own cereal. Called Wicked Smarts. Very cute. Oh no! Removal before I could give it hexproof! At least I get to draw a card. And I'll get to draw another card! Because of audacity! Yay, audacity! Dying killer coming down. And I think it's time to cause some removal. Uh, I think Elspeth's Nightmare. Definitely ready to swing out here. We could take down a flyer or we could take out an unblockable. I'm gonna go for the unblockable suspicious stowaway. Unless, of course, they counter it. Counter spells in this economy. All right, well, I mentioned sagas before, so let's get our first saga down. Azuzu's many journeys. Azuzu's many thingamadangs. Uh, and I will swing in with a Dryad because, yeah, I know, like, we're supposed to be Voltroning on Glissa, but we have Glissa at home. And Glissa at home is a 2-4 hot nymph Dryad daddy who sits in a tree. Right? Right? Yeah. Mm, they have their counter spell. They have a Terramander that's getting into adapt range. I actually think they could adapt it here. That would deal more damage. They cannot tap this down because it does have Hexproof. Um, Staggering Insight. Okay, so they're also getting some auras going on. And they're taking an extra turn. Ooh, they must have drawn that extra turn card or they would have attacked with everything. Um, and what do they have here? They got the Terramander swinging in, gaining life, drawing cards. Suspicious Stowaway coming in, drawing and discarding. Mausoleum Wanderer just uh, swinging in, getting that damage in. And Rigo's coming in too. All right, Rigo, what you got? Well, the answer is card advantage. Ooh, a counter creature. This is Siren Storm Tamer. An amazingly good, um, it's the best way to call it, tempo card. This is a tempo card. This certainly is. Uh, I'm going to attack in with the Dryad. D do you block it? I wonder if they have a counter spell in hand. I really hope they don't. This is back on the battlefield. And I'm going to move over the mirror shield. I assume in response, they're gonna either tap it down, or they're gonna adapt their Terramander, or maybe both. Aha, you touched my creature with an ability. Give me cards. I got a Gaia's gift. Remember Tybar's stand? Same thing. Plus one more puts a plus one, plus one counter. I guess it also gives um reach, trample. That's very relevant text for somebody like Glissa, my dear friend Glissa. Oh, and I missed that they had a Hall of Storm Giants. Wow, I said that so badly. Storm Giants. Which means I'm dead. A good game, Rose Nepals. I liked your Rigo. Kenrith, the Returned King. It's five color good stuff. Now, it might have a sub theme. Do I think it does? No, because it's a Kenrith deck. All right, so what are we going to do? We're going to mulligan because that had two lands in it. We're going to keep this because it has ramp in it and cool other stuff in it too, like protection spells and whatever you want to call Rune of Might. It's an aura. It draws you a card. It can give Glissa Trample, which I like. I'm a big fan of giving Glissa Trample. Um, two mana and a two mana spell, the Arcane Signet. And now it's going to ask me constantly, hey, do you want to make your permanent indestructible? No? How about now? No? How about now? No, I still don't want to, uh, game. Nothing changed. I still don't want to. 
but I will play Glissa, and I'm going to protect her with the power of this cameo safekeeping. If they try to destroy her, wipe the board, etc., we can keep her alive. But if they have a sacrifice-based effect, we're probably out of luck. Cultivate. They're getting more mana so they can play Kenrith next turn. I'll be able to remove Kenrith uh, when he enters the battlefield if that's what they do. They may actually wait and you know, play the other good stuff in their deck. Mm-hmm. Islands and Plains. Blue mana. Shame nothing here is an enchantment, so I can't just get rid of it with Glissa. In we go. We're going to draw a card. Mm, and I will play the first Heroin Games because I have a protective spell, I have removal, and I want to have fun. First Heroin Games is a saga that is really neat with Glissa because you get to chapter three, you've gotten most of the value, and you can rewind it to chapter one or two, depending on what you need, using Glissa's ability, removing up to three. Wow, that's ramp. Uh, up to three um, counters from my permanent of a choice. Choice of a permanent? I'm great at saying words. So good at saying words that nobody's ever questioned how badly I say words before. Hello, Ramp. Our opponent has so much mana, and I feel like they're just going to play some game-endingly good spell here. Glissa, get bigger. Glissa, get more and bigger trample also. Mm-hmm. Weather Seed Treaty. Okay. Gotta swing in. I'm going to draw more cards. Looking good. I'm gonna play the Dryad of the Elysian Grove. Throw down beside you who endures and pass back to you, Kenrith. Ooh, what you got? You got a board wipe? I can live through a board wipe. Deputy of Detention! Oh, do they want to put Glissa in jail? Glissa says no jail. My mom's looking out for me. My mom is Tamio. Okay, that's not her mom, but it's somebody's mom. It's a rat's mom. It's Nashi's mom. God, so sad what happened to Tamio. I really hope Nashi, uh, her rat son, gets a spark and is a planeswalker and has a really fun time partying hard with all the other planeswalkers. It would make me very happy. All right, so now we have a 7-7 seven, seven, trample, a first strike, death touch, Glissa. She's huge. We're going to draw cards off first row in games. Nice. We could rewind the first hero in games to a chapter of our choosing. Zerda? I mean, Zerda's great with Kenrith. I do get that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm going to swing in with Glissa. Makes sense that they would want this in the graveyard so they can reanimate it with Kenrith. We're dealing a lot of damage. Like a lot of damage. All right, we got another land. We can play an extra land. And I think we should protect Glissa. Now this does not protect the Rune of Might side of things, but it does mean that if removal then comes back, which is pretty good. We're gonna play Liliana and sacrifice two creatures. My token and my Dryad. We're gonna draw two cards. We have two equipments here. Now, if they can get rid of this, which they might be able to, in fact, they can on a land? Ah, all right, now I think we're good. That's just a henge. Yeah, you know, only the great henge. But preventing damage is gonna be hard. They can gain two life and they can put a plus one, plus one counter. But that doesn't mean that much if there's no Kenrith there. It's kind of nice. We're going to increase the amount of damage we're dealing with the Sword of Ford and Ford. Wow, Forge and Frontier. Throwing that on Glissa. This is the uh, Sword of Mountain Dew and Doritos. Mm. Mountain Dew and Doritos. And we're going to swing in. Now, because of the terrifying combination of... Oh, wait a minute. I knocked my own aura off. Guys, I goofed up. I goofed up. I forgot that the protection would knock that down. Out of my face. No more trample. There's no more trample. 
protection applies to your own auras. No damage goes through. Had I killed the Kenrith first, we would have been fine. But unfortunately, my my Mountain Dew and Doritos were so toxic that they knocked <laughs> they knocked the dang aura, the root of might, right off us. I'm not trampling. I'm trampless. Yes, and that's okay. Now they can reanimate something at instant speed. Let's see if they'd like to. Would you like to bring back your deputy of detention? Would you like to exile my Glissa, Sunslayer? They draw a card. Glissa goes to jail. We decline sending it to the command zone, but Glissa does come back. Uh, thanks to the ghost form. And we're going to scooch this deputy out of the way. Get out of here. We're going to put the sword back on. And Glissa's going to be like, I'm sorry. I know you had lethal before, but I messed it up. No, I messed it up. I love you, babe. You're so cool. All right, we're going to draw a card. Lose a life. Feeling good. Draw some more cards over here in exile land. Do more damage. Some of this. Ooh, some of that. What? Some of this. Some of that. Some of that. We're going to get rid of the Great Henge because the Great Henge is actually a very good card. Uh, we're going to plus make another zombie and say goodbye to Raska. Bye, Raska. Hmm. Card has been foretold. Ah, and another card, which could have been foretold, is now destroying all my creatures. I'm going to draw three cards, thanks to Liliana doing Liliana stuff. Ooh, that's so cash. <gasps> Even more targets! Hello there, Gilded Goose. Goodbye, Gilded Goose. Uh, I want to destroy an artifact, creature, and land. Artifact, creature, and... You only have one blue source. Land. Saw it coming! I guess that's what they had. I was about to say, they already used a heroic intervention, but that's a counterspell to protect that goose. And also some mana. The mana is probably the more relevant and important part. Gliss is coming out. We're gonna plus me and my little zomboy. Take a look at what I have in my graveyard here. Some very nice pieces of removal. I love playing Golgari stuff. Smothering Tithe. If I draw a card, if I don't pay two, they get a treasure! And Fabro Elder, who tapped for mana, equal to their colors. I draw. Would you like a treasure? I know everything that they have, so yeah, you can you can have a treasure. Oh, I thought I clicked to have a treasure. Oops, I paid two. It doesn't matter very much. Um, hmm. Weather Seed Treaty. Chapter two. Make a sapperling. By the way, this does give protection from red and green. But I want to use my Planeswalker and draw more cards. It makes me happy. You can eat your food. Not going to make another food? Okay. Resolve. Decline. Resolve. Decline. Sword of Mountain Dew and Doritos. One short of lethal because they can eat this food. Gain three life. Glissa does glissa things. I will destroy that smothering tithe. Ooh, these are good cards. Courser of Crufix. Gain life. Yeah, I'll play the life of Toshiro Umazawa. Sounds fun to me. And I will gain two life. So, Kenrith costs 9 mana. 
This costs seven mana. And there's a mystery card. All right, Kenrith. You can gain five life. I don't, I don't know if there's anything else you can do. I feel like you can gain five life. I guess you could reanimate? No, you could draw a card. That's fine. We're gonna make Glissa bigger. Oh, yeah. We're gonna do that thing. We're going to kill Kenrith. We're gonna do this for X equals six. It's not because we have something to reanimate. It's because he can put a plus one, plus one counter on himself. Oh, I guess he could have put two plus one, plus one counters on himself. But if they do that, then does it really matter? No, because they're hecka dead. All right. They gain life. I bring back the Dryad. And we attack for lethal, which is what I missed a few turns ago. But you know what? You don't watch me because I, you know, play that well. You watch PVDDR because he plays well. You watch me because I'm having fun. Jadar, ghoul caller of Nephalia. Jadar is really sweet because he spits out a token every turn, as long as you don't already have a card with decay. Hello there, Jadar, jewel caller. Wow, jewel caller? That makes you sound very pretty and fancy. No, you're a ghoul caller. You do not make jewelry appear. Unless you do. Hmm. Well, I like this hand because it has ramp and removal. And more ramp and more removal. Oh, and a protective spell. Heroic intervention. That's nice. Uh, also, I like that I have a meat hook massacre against Jadar because he is a 1 1 and I want him dead. Ha ha ha! Die, Jadar. I think that using my meat hook massacre early is going to cut it off from me, but we have a lot of good single target removal and making it so they don't have that. Sacrifice target and that early damage should be helpful to us as the Gusso player. Hmm. I want to eat this dried mango, so I'm going to do that while I take my next turn. Sorry, I'm not going to narrate this. I'm too busy eating dried mango. That was really good dried mango. Thanks for waiting while I ate that. Hi, Jadar. <laughs> Jadar's back. I ramped. They ramped. But I'm a Golgari deck, so I ramped more. And now I think it's time for Glissa. Hi, Glissa. We can protect Glissa with the heroic intervention, which is good against anything except for sacrifice effects. If they have a board wipe, which I'm sure they have at least one in their deck. We will be ready! Okay, Jadar. What can you do against a Death Touch First Striker? Probably try to kill her. They have a lot of kill spells. Or Exile. Hmm, Spark Harvest. I protect. Heroic Intervention to give my permanent Hexproof and Indestructible. The Hexproof is what's relevant here. You can't touch me. I'm Glissa Sunslayer. Oh, hi, Yogmoth. Yogmoth is so tasty with Jadar. It's probably going to just kill my Saffirling. By the way, not a human. Why is this relevant? Because Yogmoth has protection from humans. Which, if you ever see me play Yogmoth, you'll hear me say it all the frickin' time. Because it's true, and it's scary. Uh, I'm going to attack with Glissa, who has Trample and plus two, plus two until end of turn. Uh, thanks, Weather Seed Treaty. Trample's really good with uh, Death Touch and First Strike. In we go! Would you like to block? Yay or nay? No, but they're putting a minus one, minus one counter on her. She's shrinking! That's one less damage to their face. I will draw a card and lose a life. And I'm going to play Vraska, Relic Seeker. So Vraska's just good. She's really good. She destroys creatures and artifacts and enchantments. And she leaves me with a little treasure token. 
The reason I went for the Yawgmoth first is so they could not sacrifice Jadar when I follow up with the Maelstrom Pulse. Now my Glissa might be dead soon because they did shrink her down. So that's fine. I have enough mana to replay Glissa. I have so much mana. All I have is mana. Also, yes, we could remove the minus one, minus one counters from Glissa. Dang, that's neat. Oh, but it was a setup for the worm! Hello, worm. And goodbye, Galissa. And associated token. We're gonna lose some life, but they're gonna lose life too. Thank you, Meat Hook Massacre. And we're gonna make a blocker, a pirate. Hashtag Yar, hashtag Yoho. And we're gonna go ahead and get out Galissa again, and we're gonna give her some boots, and she's gonna put on the boots, and she's going to be the most fashionable woman in all of... Phyrexia? New Phyrexia. New Phyrexia. We swing in. Do you care to block? They do not care to block. We're gonna draw a card. And we're gonna get... a land, but they don't need to know that. If they have removal for this token, they can kill Vraska. But that leaves them very open to me hitting them even more. Not that they would block Lissa. She's not good for blocked. She makes good killing. She hex proof and haste and first strike death touch now. So much. So much text. Honestly, she feels like a baby questing beast sometimes. Oh. I see you highlighting her. Ah, uh, yes. Are you admiring my boots? With the fur? With the fur! I really need to get an altar of Swiftfoot boots that are Uggs. Oh, that's so cute! Alright, so, Eldest Reborn. They want to make it so they get this Vraska dead this turn. Uh, but you know what? I have enough mana to replay Glissa, so I'm actually just going to sacrifice Glissa! Also, she gets haste, because of the boots. I'm keeping Vraska alive. Why? Because she can kill. Ooh, and a Witch's Cauldron. Do you attack in? I will block with my Yoho Pirate. They lose a life. I lose two life. Looking good. We can either destroy this or this. I'm going to destroy the worm. Can they bring it back? Yeah, but they have other good targets too. Dogma. Do they sacrifice this in response? That would deny me getting the treasure token. Village rights. Yep. In the graveyard it goes. They draw two cards. We play a land. We play Glissa. We put the boots on Glissa. We attack in with Glissa. And Glissa says destroy target. Enchantment. Love the words. They have 10 life remaining. Oh, we have 15. We're not exactly high on life, but we're doing pretty well. Ghost Quarter can destroy a fancy little land over here. Jadar can come out and then be a 1-1, one -one, which isn't that good. But a 1-1 one -one can still block Glissa. <gasps> what if they could make me sacrifice Glissa? Bye, Glissa. Good thing we're so good at ramping. How much mana do I even have? I have 10 mana. Plus an 11th right here. Oh, the audacity. Uh, I can replay Glissa, but I want to kill this Liliana first. Over getting damage on face, I need to take her out. And she's gone. She's out. She is no longer a threat to me. We play Glissa. We move the boots to her. Oh, right. I forgot that she could remove counters. I could have put the boots on her, hit face, and removed the counters from Liliana if I wanted to deal more damage last turn. This is what happens when you play new cards. You forget all of the cool things they do, even if you're the one who built the deck. Ooh, my things are dead. And now we have dueling meat hooks. Thankfully, we can just keep putting the boots onto pirates. Hashtag Yoho. Hashtag Yarhar. Hashtag... Let's do some piracy. Oh no! Unless they destroy my pirate generator. 
with the blood thief with the blood chief's thirst i said that so badly doesn't matter here's Guzza. back in action hitting your face drawing a card destroying enchantments probably not destroying enchantments um drawing a card a land and by the way we have audacity in hand uh audacity lets me uh, get a little bit more damage and a little bit of trampling on Glissa so she can't just be chump blocked. And Erebos is out. They may have an indestructible god, but indestructible doesn't actually do that much against the powers that are the text here. There's a lot of text. Uh, if they would like to live through this turn, they have to double block. They did not. I guess I could have used Druid class, animated the land, and then gotten guaranteed lethal, but nobody remembers what First Strike Death Touch Trample does. Too much to think about. Too much. You sign the lethal damage, which is one, and then you win the game, which is fun. Yarak the Desecrated, one of the most popular and powerful commanders out there. Yarak's all about doubling enter the battlefields, just like a certain new Praetor that was just printed, Elish Norn. Which, by the way, I did build a deck for. She's very cool. She's very powerful. And I look forward to showing off that deck soon. All right, what do we got? We have our Shaper's Sanctuary. We're so good at playing this on turn one. It's a talent. We're so talented with our Shaper's Sanctuary. Making it so if they target me with spells or abilities. Well, not me, my creatures. I'm representing myself with Glissa here. I'm the Glissa now. We draw a card, which is nice because they probably have a lot of things that enter the battlefield, kill a guy. Ooh, Riveteer's Overlook. That's gonna gain them a life and get them a basic. I'm gonna guess it's a forest. Nice. Forest indeed. And I would like to play Gusa, but I'm afraid she would die. So instead I'm going to play Satessan Champion because um, this is an enchantment stack also. This is an enchantment. She'll draw me a card. Yay! Card draw! Let's do it! Ride of the Elysian Grove! Draw me a card! Oh, and it was a land! Perfect! We tack in for two! Perhaps we will throw all of our auras and equipments on Satessan Champion, because she could get huge this game! Yarrick's out on the battlefield. Very scary and spooky! Play a land, and uh, I'm gonna play a little funky right here. I am going to attack with these two creatures, and if they block, we have Black Sun's Twilight, which can give minus three, minus three, or minus four, minus four, which will kill Yarek. I'm not able to use the reanimation since this is not X equals five. But I figured it's better than using this board wipe and killing my dryad, since I would probably keep the Satessan champion alive. That is a commander down. Now they have to pay an entire seven mana? Yeah. Oh, hey, Risco. By the way, I want to say something. I think risco has been moved to Hell Cube because the number of times I've seen Risco as a commander today is zero. I've seen zero Riscos. It makes me so happy. I'm such a happy girl. I wish every day were like this. I wish every day there was no worries of riscos and clocks. Ooh, a land. Perfect. Anyway, let's um make it so Risco never existed. Or at least try to. They might be able to protect him. Nope, he's gone. Exiled, forever lost to the infinite realms. He's a ghost. Bing bong. Getting in five damage. To test and champion, my beloved. Carry me home! <laughs> I'm recording this significantly later at night than usual. Can you tell? Alright, so I also did play Black Market Connections there. That wasn't just a dud uh, enchantment, and I think they're probably going to destroy it. Yes, uh, they could have also destroyed the Dryad there, but this makes sense. This is a really good card that lets me pay life to get artifacts, which is treasures. Um, card draw, card draw, and creatures, which is everything, because it's a shapeshifter with Changeling. Nice Uros coming in, gaining them life, not getting them a land, but being ready to be escaped in a potential future turn. Hmm. Oh, there are so many temptations here. I'm going to start with the temptation that is playing a really good card. 
Shuriken defends the temple. Uh, it makes a little guy, and then it makes me treasures. Or not treasures, then it makes me uh, counters. Plus one, plus one counters. And then it flips over and turns into a really cool dragon. I like really cool dragons. Hi, Midnight Clock. Probably going to destroy the Midnight Clock before it actually hits midnight. Oh, <gasps> Ashaya! That makes this into a land. I have a lot of things that say non-land permanent. And this is triggering its own landfall ability. Thanks, I hate it. Um, we're going to put some plus one plus one counters on our homies. We're going to play this. We're going to play this. And we're going to say an artifact, creature, land, and... Is there an enchantment out here? There are no enchantments out here, other than mine. Uh, so we're going to hit the Midnight Clock, Ashaya, and it's a land. Tireless Provisioner. But it is a land. Thanks to Ashaya, it is a land. And they're down to five life. Glissa, by the way, has been peacefully slumbering away in our command zone this entire game. Doesn't champion doing work. <gasps> but it's ever emergent ultimatum. Now it's going to come down too. Are they a deck that builds around Emergent Ultimatum combo, or are they just a deck that has good stuff here? Okay, so extra turn, extra turn, bounce all my stuff. Two extra turns. You can have two extra turns. But you can't bounce my stuff. That's my stuff. Now let's see what they do during these two extra turns. By the way, this is the alchemized version of Auron's Epiphany which is very important because it does not give them birds unless it was cast from Hortel, which it wasn't. Mm -hmm. Ouch. I need these. These are my very special cards. Uh, they could definitely escape Burrow this next turn. They may want to get out, yep, Garrick first, so they get twice the life, twice the cards, and twice the ramp and twice anything else that they happen to get. I don't know what cards they have in hand, but there are three of them, and I bet most of them are very good. Temple of Milady gives them two scries. Ah, yes. They kept one on top. Hmm, a secret. A secret they can draw with Uro. And you can tell that they are escaping Uro right now as they highlight the cards in their graveyard picking and pulling the cards they want to keep in the graveyard and the ones they want to get rid of. They probably want to keep Time Warp in the graveyard. They probably have some ways to bring it back. And here comes Uro! And they get twice their triggers, twice the fun. Up to 12 life. Four cards in hand. And... Oh, Risen Reef! I love Risen Reef so much. It's an elemental. Garrick's also an elemental. And it gets two cards! One was a land. By the way, this does double trigger, but it only gets you one land. Uh, it says, if you do, on it, so it only triggers on the sacrifice. Ooh. You want to swing in for five? Swing in for two? I swing on. By the way, that was um, the little flicker in transformation does count for Satessan Champion. Uh, seeing an enchantment enter the battlefield, which I always think is really cool. Um, I love that about the card's design. Land. Land! Mortality spear on your commander. Attacking for six. And playing a Planeswalker. Garuk, Cursed Huntsman. We're going to use this to just swing this little Uro off the battlefield. It's back in the graveyard where it can be escaped. Uh, but they only have five total cards in graveyard. And it would need more! Far more in order to uh, bring this bad boy out. Hey! Remember that card that I didn't want them to have? They got it. It's River's Rebuke. It put all the non-land permanents I have back into my hand. Some of which, that makes a big difference. Some of which it doesn't. So Tessin Champion is going to get reset down into an itty-bitty baby 1-3. 
Oh, hello, Sword of Forge and Frontier. Protection from green, you say? That's one of three colors in their deck. I love that for us. Um, I'm going to play Lucitessen Champion. Glissa, no, I'm ignoring you. I want to try to win without Glissa. Make my champion grow and grow. Ooh, heroic intervention. Maybe I should just pull that up. No, I want to say and grow again. And grow! My Citizen Champion has grown. What's up with you? Yarrick returns to the battlefield. They have four mana up. And they do have enough to once again bring out Uro. Gaining life, drawing cards, doing the thing that it does. Oh, or they could just channel Moldrifter. Not channel, evoke Moldrifter. That's going to um, get four cards in their hand. I love this guy. It's so cute. It's not a fish. It's an elemental. Uh, I will put plus one, plus one counters on these beautiful creatures. And then I'm going to make... Wait, let me count my mana. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, you guys want to see something cool? Of course you want to see something cool. I'm going to play Garuk. Oh, they countered it. I wanted to show you something cool. I guess I'm not allowed to do that. So instead I'm going to play the Sword of Forge and Frontier, which is still pretty cool. Like, I guess. And I'm going to attack with the Tessin Champion, who can't be blocked. Because you're both green. Green with envy about how cool this card is. I get to play an extra land for this turn, and my Infernal Grasp goes away forever. Bye! Shipwreck Dowser. Oh no. Somebody can take another extra turn! Because Time Warp and the River's Rebuke are coming back. If they choose to River's Rebuke themselves, they can take infinite turns. <laughs> if they had enough mana... Oh, that'll work too! This place you're getting, they have set up a loop! I guess I should have just, uh, focused a little bit more on removal, right? <laughs> so there is a reason why, um, extra turn spells in the modern age, uh, all exile after they've been cast. And the reason is so you do not loop them like this. But unfortunately, it's too late for me. They can take an infinite number of turns by just casting spells and casting spells and casting spells and casting spells. And as fun as I think it would be to watch them take, you know, dozens of extra turns, I'm not here for that. So I'm gonna leave. Bye, Yarek. Good game. He might not be a new commander, but he's got a lot of new fun toys. A Johnny Sleeper Agent is a very strong poison commander. You play him with lots of creatures and planeswalkers, and once you get that ult up and ready, which is really easy to do if you have a teeny tiny bit of proliferate, the poison starts flowing. And the amount of proliferate that was printed in the new set for Exia All Will Be One is kind of nuts. Like, really just Wizards of the Coast, you didn't need to do that. Why did you do that? Why did you just put proliferate on good cards? I can't believe you've done this. You're making me so sad right now. Anyway, they've ramped. Uh, and so I'm going to ramp too. Uh, any, meeny, miny, you. We've got two black green lands now. Mm-hmm. Staff of completion. This is a bit like the old staff from Mirrodin, but it lets you destroy your own permanence. Add mana, proliferate, draw cards, and then untap. It's that proliferate I mentioned before. It does a lot. It's very scary. Um, and I'm going to start setting up for my own scary business. By getting the boots out. Boots are good because they let me get hexproof onto Glissa. So my opponent can't touch her. And also she goes really fast like Sonic the Hedgehog. That's my commander. Sonic the Hedgehog. That's what it says right there. Sonic the Hedgehog. 
She's, she's not blue, she's green. It's because there was a coloring error at the at the animation studio. Hiya, Johnny! <laughs> How are you doing? Johnny's out on the battlefield and up to five loyalty. Now remember, it only costs life for the staff of completion. So for them to proliferate next turn would be kind of easy peasy. Johnny, you you good? Lando or Lunch Speaker, you, you want to attack in or something? They're eyeing, they're eyeing something here. Okay. We're going to play Glissa. We're going to give Glissa haste. Actually, wait. I'm gonna play the fun and little uh, signet first. There we go. We're gonna give Glissa haste. We're going to attack with Glissa at their face and Dryad directly at the Ajani. And this is because Glissa does have a fake questing beast ability here. Which allows me to remove three counters. One, two, three, from this Ajani. Also, you know, the first strike death touch means they probably don't want to block her. Like, ever. Pretty much. Alright, they're plussing, and on top of their deck is a reprobation! A aura that's quite good. It's going to the bottom of their deck, though. It's a good way to shut down your opponent's commanders by turning them into cowards. At least I'm pretty sure it's cowards. Yep, cowards. Can't block warriors. It's so sad. And they have six mana available because this thing you can essentially create free Phyrexian mana with. It's, it's very good. Very good. Sky Shroud Lookout gets an elf. An elf? I suppose they might just want more mana. Okay, so they have four mana here. Um, and I am going to move the Tramplebringer, Shadow Spear, onto Glissa. And then I'm going to add the Rune of Might onto the Swiftfoot Boots. If I attack their face, I can still remove three counters off of Johnny, but they're still able to proliferate and keep him alive. I think it's actually going to be better for me to just attack a Johnny this turn. And I know it's not as fun, but we do what we can. Also, I'm gonna go in with the Dryad because I don't think it's gonna do much otherwise. What else is happening here? Wandering Emperor. Okay, the Wandering Emperor does let them exile the Dryad, but Glissa does have Hexproof. This is what you get for hurting my Boom! All right. There goes their commander, at least for now. <laughs> Glissa. If you are relegated to just being some sort of wild and wacky planeswalker remover this whole game, I get that. And hopefully I'll have more ways to protect you soon. Oh, Elvish Visionary. I wonder if they were just like, I love elves. Oh, Johnny is an elf deck now. Sure. Johnny's an elf deck now. Ooh, Knight of Autumn! They can take out the boots! Or maybe you take out the Shadow Sphere? No, you take out the boots. The boots also have the rune on it, so that's going to get rid of the uh, plus one, plus one, but not the trample, because we're also getting trample from Shadow Sphere. I love keywords. Just keep putting more keywords onto Glissa. You know what the new Audric wishes he were? He wishes he were this. All right, so that is now a 2-2. Two -two. But it blocks just as well as a 1-1 one -one because of the power of these keywords in combination. Uh, we're going to use the Weather Seed Treaty here. I would like more land. Chapter 1. More dirt, please. Okay, you want to use the staff? 
You can, you can proliferate. Uh, listen, I'm barely dealing damage to you. You're dealing damage to you. I'm going to swing in with Glissa. Swing in with Glissa. You know, it's possible they have swords to plowshares here, which would be a massive bummer. And Glissa goes in. And even if you block with everything you have, one damage goes through, which is all I need for Glissa's ability. We go in, we hit, and we questing beast to remove three counters from the Wandering Emperor. One, two, three. Well, there's only two, but that's fine. And we'll follow up with Jigon Defends the Temple, which will give me a little 1-1 one, one on the battlefield. Who taps for mana and put counters next turn and then give me a dragon. Yeah, dragon! They're down to 12 life. We're at 32, since Shadow Spear also has been gaining us lots of life. And they're killing Glissa. She no longer has the protection of the boots. So that's completely understandable. But they leave us with a clue! Where's Grandpa? We'll have to follow the clues to find out. Hello, human monk. Would you like to become my next Voltron target? Okay. Beast Whisper, another elf that draws them cards. We get a Sapperling. I didn't order those right, so there was no Sapperling to get tokens on, or uh, get counters on. And Glissa returns to the battlefield. And she puts on her cute little spear. Looking good. Looking great. We're gonna sit here, because um, attacking doesn't make sense. Johnny unyielding. So this has exile target creature. It's a controller gains life equal to its power. And there goes Glissa. A very good reusable piece of removal, especially with that proliferate. Um, so Johnny will be able to do it again next turn, I'm pretty sure. But they have to be careful about how much life they're paying because they only have eight life left. They have Elf, 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 and Elf. Do you attack? No, all right, we're gonna draw a card. Tracking that clue and getting a Blood on the Snow? Hmm. I don't have any creatures in the graveyard. But that doesn't stop me from wanting to attack the Sajani. I'm going to go ahead and throw some uh, nice little trample onto this again. I'm going to swing both of you at a Johnny. Because I may actually want to destroy all creatures. Okay. I think they forgot that they had a free block there. I'm down. It's cool. Time for dogs. Oh, and uh, one of the dogs is big. The other dog is not. He's jealous of his brother. He says, why did you get to eat all the roast beef? That's because I got there first. That's why their mouths are dripping with red. It's because the man over here was giving them roast beef. Don't feed wild animals, guys. It forms bad habits. That's, yep, that's what's happening on Garuk's Wolves. Wizards of the Coast, you should hire me to write your lore. I would do a great job. Oh, it's Ugin, who can't be apt. Uh, Ugin the Ineffable can either destroy a colored non-land permanent Sorry, that actually could be a land, but very few lands have colors. Or make a token! Hello, token! Um... Goodbye, opponent? Yeah, we'll just attack in here. Um... Actually, do it with, uh... Hey, you know, everybody in, everybody in. 
Get him. Get him. Kill him. Make him dead. Oh, I should have thrown down a meat hook first. Don't need it. We're down to four. Yeah, if we had put the uh, Shadow Spear on that, it would have been a little better. Because then I could have just attacked with the Remnant and then meat hooked for lethal. You know what? It is hour 10 of me streaming today. I'm doing my best. Also, check out these dogs. We can kill with this. It takes more, like, actions. That's why I think it's worse. Whee! Meatrick Massacre says, die, 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 and die. And we win the game. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of Brawl Stars. As always, if you'd like to watch these being recorded live, you should come over to twitch.tv slash Amazonian. If you want a preview of the next two decks coming up, well, we've got some rats and Elish Norn coming your way. And if you have a new commander from one you'd like to see, you should let me know. I know that during the gameplay today, I didn't get to do that much saga stuff other than playing the sagas because they're good. Uh, but let me tell you, I did manage to get the little loop with Galissa and Phyrexian Scriptures repeatedly wiping the board going. It was sick, but the opponent in the game, uh, they stalled every single turn. It was really boring, so it didn't make it into the video, which is a shame. Anyway, I am so happy that you guys got to watch this video, and I hope you're all enjoying the new set because it has some really sweet legends and also non-legends that can go into a lot of decks. I'm looking forward to playing a lot of proliferate stuff with my planeswalkers too because it's not like they needed to be more powerful but you may as well make them more powerful because you can um again comments tell me the commanders you want to see do it i might build them that's how i make decisions i i crowdsource them i'm too tired to think it takes too much effort okay have a good night